Yo, what's up everyone? I'm John with Shutterstock and today I'm going to be showing you how I animated this fake 3D eye in After Effects. Let's jump into it. So basically this animation starts off with a psychedelic pattern in the background and then from there the eye comes on screen, rotates forward, blinks a couple times, moves left to right, and then it rotates backwards and flies off screen. So I wasn't really driving home one day and was like, boom, I got in, I have, I have this cool idea. I was just on After Effects trying to make an eye blink fluidly, trying to make it look realistic. And then I had the idea of like, what, what if I can make it like rotate forward? But I shot myself down by saying like, no, that has to be built in Cinema 4D. I'm glad I didn't totally scrap this idea because I went back and I kind of taught myself how to fake 3D an object. So let's jump into After Effects so I can share all these tips that I learned from this project and also break down the animation. So the first thing I want to break down for you guys is the background. It's really simple, so I don't want to spend too much time on it, but basically I made a solid and threw on the effect called Radio Waves. I never used it before, but I was messing around and having fun with it, tweaking a bunch of the settings, and eventually I got this really cool psychedelic pattern, which in my opinion brought the whole thing together. From there, I wanted to add some color to it, so I threw on a gradient ramp effect, but what I did differently is that I put a wiggle expression on the start and end of the ramp, that way it looks more dynamic. And honestly, ever since I found out that you can make gradients move with expressions, I never not use this technique. I then pre-comped the whole thing for my own organizational purposes and moved it into the main project composition. When I was building the eye, let me tell you, I had no idea how to fake 3D its rotation. I just, I knew this was going to be a really hard task, so I kept trying different things, but just Everything I did, I could not get it to look right. So I kept messing around with it for about a day or two, then finally I got it. What I ended up doing was animating the gradients in a way that makes it seem like the circle is being lit from one side. So when I solo only the base of the eye, you can see that the gradient point moves from the bottom to the top of the circle. And at this point, all it looks like is that it's going from dark to light. This is where things get really interesting. When you animate the eye opening along with the gradient movement, it gives the illusion that it's rotating, which I thought was pretty cool. So at this point, once I got all that down, I knew I can continue on with the rest of the build. The way I made the iris is just two circles stacked on top of one another with gradients applied to them. One of them is using a, a gradient ramp and the other is a four color gradient. For the pupil, all I did was make a black circle and so there's not much to it there. And for this cool looking glare, all I did was create a white circle and then blurred it out with an effect called fast box blur. Specifically talking about how the inner eye looks around, in order for you to make it look realistic, you need to use hold keyframes. In real life, our eyes are really fidgety. So when we are looking around, it almost looks like our eyes are moving instantly and hold keyframes replicate this motion. Really quick, just in case you do not know what hold keyframes are, let me explain. Hold keyframes keep their value until it reaches the next keyframe. So if your first hold keyframe is at a value of zero and your second is at 100, the value does not change in between like normal keyframes. It will instantly change from zero to 100. Okay, back to our normal program. The way I animated the eye opening and closing was just simple path animation. Every five frames, I would copy and paste a keyframe where the eye is open and one keyframe where the eye is closed. I just repeated this over and over again until it was time for the eye to completely close and fly out of frame. I knew it was crucial animating the eye correctly at the beginning and end of it because that's what was going to sell the fake 3D rotation. If I was to leave it open or I just didn't animate it at all, it's going to look like it was just sliding into the circle and that's not the look I was going for. For the grain texture on the base circle, I applied the layer style called bevel and emboss. If you change the blending mode in the settings to dissolve, you get a cool grain texture. But one thing to keep in mind is that you cannot use the blending mode dancing dissolve. But for this project, since there was already a bunch of motion, it works just fine. I used mask, track mats, and Gaussian blurs to add small amounts of color to the edges of the circle. And if you solo these layers, you can see exactly what they're doing. It's not much, but it does make it look a little cooler. 
For this cool haze layover on the eyes, I drew a mask that was smaller than the actual shape of the eye, checked the invert box, and feathered the mask. Then I put this comp into the main project and threw on a glow effect. So that's about it for this video. If you guys use any of the tips that you've learned today in any of your projects, go ahead and tag me on Instagram because I would love to see what you guys are working on. But until then, see you guys next time.